Hi hey everybody, thanks for coming. Um, anybody in, in, uh, the, in the clinical trial world? Or, uh, no? Okay. Uh, so it's just, you know, a, an example of where um, this kind of mix between process and project come together. So a lot of people think that they need a, uh, a project management to do, tool to do certain, you know, certain types of uh, work. But in fact, underlying that project is a process, right? You've got precedents and successes in your project plan, but that means that basically it's a process, right? So um, in, in a case like clinical trials, there's a, a, a big um, difference between the, 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 the person who's responsible for creating the processes, which tend to be very complex, um, and the person actually running the project, who's a project manager, who doesn't really care about the process, they just need to work on the schedule and resource management and, and things like that. So, um, so that was one, you know, that's kind of like the, 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 the key uh, thing that we bring to the table work, really, but uh, I'll give you a little bit of, of kind of background here. So th this, was, this case study is a, a, a clinical trial, a CRO. They do trials for big pharmaceutical companies. The, the projects tend to be um, you know, many years running, involving hundreds of people, uh, there are hundreds of concurrent projects at a time with thousands of tasks. So we're talking about, you know, high levels of, of, of complexity. Um, there's a lot of uniqueness in the process. So even though you have a process uh, that's relatively standard, you have to be able to make changes on the fly to that process and, and so on. The, um, previously, they were using um, IBM Blueworks as a way to design their processes and then once the process is designed, they would go off and whoever wanted to use them as project, they could do that, whatever. And, you know, the process would kind of get lost as the project manager tried to keep up with changes and making things happening, ha happen. Um, in, in their particular case, they use, uh, they use Salesforce, so they wanted to integrate Salesforce into, into whatever solution they came up with. Um, one of the big things in, in clinical trials, as in many uh, different uh, uh, industries, is the ability to make sure that projects are completed on time, on budget, right? So um, when you have a situation like, uh, let me just go down here, like this, where it's very, very complex, right? So you have at the top level, you might have your, um, your customer, the customer might have any projects, and each project has different countries involved, different sites within those countries. A very, very complex, it's, uh, it's um, um, you know, one of the key things is the ability to, to know what's going on. So early warning of some problem that's happening deep in the bowels of some, uh, some project is, is kind of critical. But let me go back here. Um, when we looked at, at, at the challenges that they uh, were trying to, to, to deal with, uh, we came up with five basic solutions. So the first one is to, um, to address simplicity, right? They have this really complex environment, many different tools, people using whatever they wanted, you know, all that kind of jazz. Um, flexibility, the ability to make changes on the fly without having to uh, go back to the drawing board every time um, uh, before they could actually implement anything. Visibility, which I mentioned, you know, just seeing what's going on. Um, efficiency, the, you know, there's a lot of wasted time and effort, especially when you have projects of this magnitude. Uh, there's a lot of uh, inefficiency uh, happening, so that was another area to, to be uh, looked at. And then predictability, right? So predictability, in, in their particular case, the ability to go to their clients, the Eli Lilly's and companies like that, and say to them, look, we know that we can get this thing done by this date, is, a, and we're not going to miss that date, is a critical uh, uh, thing for them. Um, so the first thing that we did is, is, uh, is, is kind of simplify the environment. So the one way that we did this is to break down um, what they required into two parts. So the first part was design by process. So you, you have a process management tool that's used by a business analyst who understands the business, and they map out um, you know, their processes using a, a, a typical swim lane diagram, and you have different levels and so on. Um, once that's complete, then they hand it over to a project manager, and the project manager manages, and again, chart primarily, uh, like any other project manager. Um, the, the, the difference here is that unlike most tools, uh, 
you don't have to uh, like do an import export or some, something like that. These are simply di different views of the data. So you have a view of the data from the business analyst uh, perspective and a view of the data from uh, the project manager's perspective. And if you make changes in either place, it's uh, reflected in, in, in both. So you never have, have the situation where your processes are uh, no longer tied to whatever your project management tool is. So yeah, that was number one. Um, the, the second thing was the ability to roll up um, the information. So down here, if you have a problem down here, you don't want to necessarily have to navigate all the way down there to know that there's a problem down there. So we created this uh, a, a pretty sophisticated uh, dashboard that's kind of rolled everything up to tell you, hey, there's a problem somewhere down here and you can kind of drill down to find exactly where that problem is and then you could explore it at that point. Um, the, and especially when you're making lots of changes, uh, it's really hard to know hey, there's a problem down there. And all of this th takes place in real time. So as the, uh, the, the data is up, uh, uh, updated, every time uh, you know, uh, a task moves from here to here, it gets reflected on here. And if it's late, it comes red and, and so on. Um, and this is basically what the chart looks like. So you can see here, you have all your different projects over here. And you have all your different uh, steps in those projects. You have milestones along the top. And if you have sub-processes, uh, sub you can expand them. And it really gives uh, management a very clear picture of where things are at. So when you're running hundreds of these things, you know, you can obviously filter them and so on. But you can get, like, just looking at it, you can see very quickly, um, you know, if there are any problems and where those problems are. And most important is the ability to know where to, fun to, to focus management attention, right? Because you can't focus attention on everything, so you, you need to know you know, where those, those issues really are. Um, in terms of efficiency, uh, one of the things that, that uh, we implemented was um, when you look at a step in a process, instead of looking at it as simply a task that needs to be done by somebody, um, we took that step and made it into uh, a, a kind of a complete unit of work. And that unit of work would have things like properties, uh, your, your KPI information, your SLA information, uh, what skills are required to complete this? You know, what, are costs, what are the costs likely to be? Are there forms associated with it? Knowledge is a big thing, right? So when someone gets that task, they, it's kind of knowledge on demand. It'll, it, whatever you need to know to complete that task comes up it, when that step is executed. Um, so there might be instructions, checklists, you know, experts like who, should, who, who you can contact if you have a problem, all of that kind of stuff. There's also kinds of activities that you can do, like you, if you need to log time, you can log time you know, directly in, into this, uh, this step. Um, control automation, obviously you, you can put rules so you can say, you know, you can, you, you, this step cannot be marked as complete until these particular things have been done. These fields have been filled out, the file has been uh, uploaded, and approval has taken place, whatever happened, those, those rules happen to be, to be, including reminders and escalations and things like that, as well as action. So one of the things, um, with Work Relay is that uh, it's, it's built on top of the Salesforce platform. So the Salesforce platform is, is basically um, you know, a business operations platform. CRM, Salesforce CRM, which is everybody thinks about Salesforce as CRM. CRM is simply an application sitting on top of their platform. And our product also sits on top of their platform. So we have access to all that functionality. Um, and so that what that means is in terms of actions, we can do things like write to the database. We can, pull information in from the database and, and, and so on. Um, and then there's the whole the, the idea of context, right? So I get this step, I'm supposed to do this, this work. I need to, you know, what came before, what's gonna come after, what decisions have been made, what issues are there, um, are there resources available, lots and lots. Of, so you have this idea of this is not just a task or a step in a process, it contains a huge uh, amount of information um, that basically and we call it increasing the smarts of the participant, right? So to make the, 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 the person responsible smarter in terms of being able to complete the task as, as quickly and efficiently as they possibly can. Um, predictability was, was probably the biggest uh, issue, right? So when you're running projects that are that big and that are, um, uh, take you know, long periods of time involving so many people, 
it's very hard to know. You know are we gonna, is this project going to be on time or is it not going to be on time? You have no idea, right? So predictability was a, a, a big issue. And um, we, we use some of the concepts, if you know critical chain project management, um, it's, a, it's a methodology uh, coming from manufacturing, actually. Um, and we took some of the concepts out of there and we implemented uh, this early warning system. And it's really based on kind of the concepts of insurance, right? So basically what it does is it, you know, it, it, when you have a, a task list, every task has some buffer in it, right? Because you, you know you're not going to necessarily complete it in this amount of time, you're going to complete it. You know, so each task uh, has that buffer. So what we do is we take that, that buffer out of each individual task and we put it into a, a bucket and it, you can track how much of the bucket is being used as the project progresses. So this gives you a much better indication of, how, of the health of the project than if you were just tracking it by individual task. Um, so this is kind of a representation of that, right? So typically, uh, you, here's the, you know, the number of iterations of, the, uh, of that particular task. Maybe 50% of the time you can get it done here, uh, but you, when you actually say how long is this task going to take, you're going to send it out to the end there because you want it to be 90% 90% chance that you're going to make it. Um, the, once you have that, once you have this mechanism in place, then you can do some very interesting graphics that help you know what's going on. So in this case, this is the, the basic fever chart. And what it does is it shows you, you know, if, you, if you're in the green line here, you, you're OK. Yellow, yeah, think about it. And red, you've got a problem. So you, if you're up here, uh, it looks like if you continue on this trajectory, you're going to be late. So you have to do something to bring it uh, back down again. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. You can change, for example, where the yellow line is depending on the type of project. So if, if a lot of stuff uh, happens right at the end, you can make this into kind of a, a, a different shape. Because what you, what you want to do is you want to trigger um, uh, management to say, oh, here's a problem. Without them having to look into each individual project, you can easily see it from one of these charts. Um, the thing that's nice about it, it's, it's objective. You know, you, it's nice. Well, we're 90% done. Right? What, what does that mean, right? I mean, this will actually give you some real uh, information that you can use. Um, you can do it as a, uh, as a chart uh, for multiple projects. So you can just kind of look at it and see which projects are in, are in trouble. Um, from a resource management point of view, you can, you can look at it and say, hey, you know, these guys are doing great. Maybe I can take some resources out there and put them up there. Um, the, uh, because we do um, forward projections, so what happens from a status point of view, status reporting point of view, is the system will go out and ask um, uh, a person responsible for a step, when do you expect this thing to be completed? It doesn't ask you how much, you know, what percent are you done, whatever. So when are you going to actually get this thing complete? And that gives you the ability to project out, are we going to be running into the red at some point in the near future? Um, afterwards, you can go back and you can look at these charts and say, oh, something bad happened here. And then you can kind of drill down and, and kind of look at, at what those things are. Um, you can, you know, it helps you look at your, your resources uh, and, and what you know, where those holdups are taking place and how they relate back to your resource pools, like where, where, they, where they are. Um, the, uh, the results of all this was that uh, they, you know, incredibly um, much, much uh, higher rate of success for, for the organization in terms of um, online, com yeah, on time completions. And, um, you know, from a management point of view, the, 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 the visibility uh, into the projects for the first time they, you know, they were able to see exactly what was going on without having to spend a huge amount of effort, right? So you don't even need, you know, status meetings because you know what the status is. You just look at these charts and you can see what the status is. Um, proactive project recovery is a big one, right? So if something's running late, you can catch it early and it's, it's much easier for you to get things back on track. And obviously reduce management effort because you don't have to do a lot of, uh, a lot of work and your decision making uh, is based on, on real information rather than uh, just kind of guesswork. Um, so in, in this particular industry, um, clinical trials uh, are, are, going, are becoming more and more important as there are more and more drugs 
uh, coming on the market that need to go through this process. And you think about it, like in the U.S., you've got the you know, FDA regulations that goes for, through four different phases and so on. But every country has their own version of FDA. So these projects and these processes all have to reflect the differences between the, the, the processes uh, in each country. And then underneath that, each site uh, might have its own variation. So using these kinds of techniques, uh, the organization is able to, is able to uh, keep track mu you know, much better uh, of knowing where things are at and what needs attention and uh, what they need to do. So, um, so that's it. And uh, we even have some time for a question. Anybody? Question? No. Yes? So, uh, since you're working with clinical trial data, did you need to do anything specific with the Salesforce platform for PHI or HIPAA, um, encrypting data, any? Well, the, so Salesforce itself takes care of all that stuff for us, right? So it's, a, it's HIPAA compliance and all that kind of thing. So we're just using the data that's already there. So we didn't have to do anything, but Salesforce itself takes care of uh, all, the, all that type of uh, control. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Good show.